What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, finally, just getting home after the WrestleMania backlash live streaming and reactions on the Inner Clutch page. Hopefully, you guys was there and uh, was able to watch it with us. We had a good time, quite enjoyable for the most part. Um, gotta give my uh, thoughts and opinions on this pay per view, and overall, I enjoyed this. This was fun. Um, I, I kind of expected it to be a, an enjoyable pay-per-view just with the match card itself. I didn't expect it to be bad, and uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. I'm going to give my rating of the over of the overall pay-per-view at the end. But we got to go down the list, talk about things that happened tonight. Let's get right into it. I am so glad they started off the show with uh, Seth Rollins versus Cody Rose. Love that match. I knew that was going to be one of my favorite matches of the night. I thought it was going to be my favorite match of the night, but uh, I had to reserve that for the six-man tag. I, that that was actually really fucking fun. But um, this match was good. This was really, really good. Nice follow-up to their WrestleMania match. Um, I like their WrestleMania match more. I think the moment was just bigger, obviously. So I like the WrestleMania match uh, a little bit more, but... This was a great follow-up. I love the story they were telling within this match of basically Seth Rollins coming off like he's much more prepared. He's prepared for all of Cody Rose's, like his offense. He knows what to think. Yeah, I mean, he knows what's about to happen. And that's how they were kind of building it up. Cody was having a tough time really getting ahead of Seth Rollins in the beginning of this match. But as the match started, you know, changing tides, um, you can kind of see Cody starting to get some offense, starting to get some rhythm. It was great, man. Seth Rollins is, is enjoy he's great, enjoyable as a heel. He needs to remain that way. I love his heel work. Him mocking uh uh Dust uh Cody Rhodes, father Dusty Rhodes in the ring, like mock mocking his punches and stuff. Beautiful heel heat. Oh man, this was this was very fantastic, man. I, I, I enjoyed this for what it was. I like the one, another spot I can think of is Seth Rollins doing the superplex off the top rope. He's going for the Falcon Arrow and it get turned into the crossroads. Oh, oh, that was so good. So good. So we get to the end of the match. End of the match obviously caused some controversy. Um, we get a, a roll-up on Seth Rollins is rolling up... Uh, um, he's rolling up uh, Cody Rose, but he's pulling the tights so the, the ref can't see it. So Cody ends up rolling up Seth Rollins and he starts pulling Seth Rollins tights and the ref doesn't see it. He gets the one, two, three pin. And that's how the match ends with a, with a roll up. I know some people in the chat was feeling like they didn't like the ending. The ending was, it came out of nowhere, kind of anticlimactic, but I get why it happened. And Seth is livid. He's pissed. Cody's like, 2-0. I beat you twice. I see what they're doing here. I see what they're doing here. They want to extend this to Hell in a Cell. And it'll probably be their final match. Um, but basically, Cody is a smart face. And that's how we look at it. How many times have we seen, especially in WWE, well, I don't even want to just exclude WWE. In wrestling in general, the baby faces are just so stupid. They just sit there and let certain stuff happen. And you be sitting there like, why did you let that happen? You had the opportunity to get some get back, get the win. And you chose not to because you wanted to be morally good. Well, in this situation, Cody knew Seth was trying to cheat. He was trying to cheat to win. So guess what he did it? Did. He cheated to win. He he beat Seth Rollins at his own game and cheated and beat him. And I'm okay with it. <laughs> He's still a babyface. I'm okay with it. It, it. it creates another match. Now, I don't know what the match is going to be. Probably going to be some type of stipulation. It is going to be Hell in a Cell. I hope they don't put this match in the Hell in a Cell. I think they may. Unless if they build it up right and they make it very intense and very personal... Okay, but I think they probably will put this match in Hell in a Cell. And I still give the win to Cody. You want to know why? Cody doesn't need to be losing. He doesn't. It doesn't make sense for him to lose. 
You need to build him up as somebody that, that ultimately can beat Roman. Because if he loses, he loses momentum. Cody needs to win. Seth can take. Granted, it's weird booking because this would be technically Seth. If Seth does, they do have this match at Hell in a Cell. This would be Seth's third rock loss in a row. So, I don't know. Maybe someone gets involved and that causes Seth to lose. I don't know. Maybe. But I like what they did there. You don't really see baby faces cheating like that. So, I was okay with it. They could have maybe came up with something different to end the match that way. But overall, I like what they did. I know they extended the feud. And I enjoyed the match either way. So, I gave that match. Uh, I'm not sure what I gave that match out of 10. I think I said like an 8 out of 10 or something like that. But definitely, I enjoyed that match. That was definitely fun. So, let's get into the next match of the night. I believe the next match was uh, Omos versus uh, Bobby Lashley. Was I really interested in this match? Eh, not so much. And I, I, I figured that um that old is gonna win with uh with um with uh mvp's help i know originally i said biggie uh not biggie uh bobby lashley was gonna win the match in my preview and predictions but after looking at it and realizing that bobby did beat him at wrestlemania they were gonna have they were gonna give him the win i know 50 50 booking but they were gonna give omas the win here obviously because uh mvp got involved this match was okay it was nothing really memorable uh it was decent had some nice moments i like uh i believe it was like a power slam of some sort or like a, a i don't know it was some type of slam that bobby had hit on omos which was pretty impressive but for the most part uh it was it was okay and i think i probably gave the score a little bit higher initially i said like seven out of ten but i had to really think about it is this a match I would actually want to go back and see? Probably not. So I, I dropped it down to like a 6 out of 10. It was okay. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. Coming off the Cody and Seth Rollins match, it was going to be hard to follow that. But it was okay. So I gave it a 6 out of 10. Wasn't too much that happened in that match where I was just like, oh, you know what I'm saying? To really notice we talk about. I'm not a real big fan of Omos. It's like move said He just... He gives me the great Kali vibe. He's just big for the sake of being big, big, but I don't really, like, his matches seem kind of one note and boring to me because it's just, I don't know. I, I don't, I have, I don't know. I'm just not really feeling Omos's moveset because it just gives me Kali vibes, but it is what it is. It was, it was serviceable at best. So, the next match after that, AJ Styles versus Edge, Damian Priest band uh, at ringside. This match was fun. I enjoyed this. This was fun. I liked the intensity AJ had at the beginning of the match. He was giving the work to Edge, man. He's like, hey, Edge, screw you. I'm about to beat the crap out of you. It was, it was fun. It was entertaining. I loved how that match started. And then it, uh, Edge started to make it a little bit more slow, more methodical. And then things started to pick up. And I think... A lot of people will be talking about what happened at the end of this match. So, Damian Priest comes outside to ramp, to the ramp, at the end of the ramp. He's not by ringside. So, that's the technicality. He's not by ringside. Then, Finn Balor comes out of nowhere, starts beating the crap out of him on the outside. And then you see someone in a hooded, like, like under a hood or whatnot. They got all black on there under a hood. And AJ Styles is at the top of the of uh, at the top turnbuckle she ends up causing him to fall i say she but i mean a lot of people kind of figured who it was but this person ends up causing uh aj style to fall from the top rope and then um edge puts uh puts i want to say it's like it was like a it was it wasn't a cross face but he ends up putting him in like some type of choke hole. he's just choking him out aj styles passes out and under the hood, which I think a lot of us kind of predicted happening, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley has joined Edge and Damian Priest. She's part of the faction, man. She, she will be giving out Judgment Day uh, whoopings, ass whoopings to the women's division. And um, I'm okay with it. 
I think this is something that she needs, something fresh for her character. And I'm, I am, it, it fits Rhea Ripley's character. I think they did a perfect job adding her. So she's part of it. And I think what they're probably going to end up doing, I can see AJ Styles getting some help. So someone mentioned it in our, in the comment section on our live stream that it will probably be Liv Morgan. Cause she, you know, she's beefing with Rhea, Liv Morgan, Finn Balor, AJ Styles versus Rhea Ripley, Edge and Damian Priest. I can see that at Hell in a Cell. At the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. And I think that'll be a fun match. I think that's probably what they'll do. Um, but I, I called it the right person won. Edge needed to win. You don't have Edge lose by himself in that situation to build up a faction. So he needs to win there. He definitely won. I am looking forward to what they're doing. I think they're just going to go through people. And eventually, if they do it right, Cody ends up beating uh, Roman Reigns for probably the WWE Championship. And then we get a feud with Edge versus Cody. Sign me up. So I think that would be some pretty cool booking right there. But enjoyed the match before everything went went, went down. And definitely enjoyed that match. That match was fun. Um... Was it better than a WrestleMania match? I actually liked this a little bit more than a WrestleMania match. I think it, the pacing was better. The WrestleMania match was kind of more slow and methodical. The pacing was a whole lot better in this match, in my opinion. And I enjoyed it. And the ending was cool. So, yeah. This is definitely a solid match. Definitely worth checking out. All right. So, the next match after that, which, thank God, it was, it was so much better than the WrestleMania match. Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey was so much fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. That was fun. I don't even... That match was a million times better than a WrestleMania match. That was fun. Chaos and Carnage. That's all I wanted to see. And they delivered. I didn't care about their feud. I didn't care about their feud buildup. This match... Was exactly what I wanted it to be. The only thing it was missing is a couple of flaming tables and maybe some barbed wire bats. That's all it was missing. But this was fun. You don't really see too many I quit matches and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this. This was so much fun, bro. Oh, man. Just the them fighting in the crowd. Them fighting all over the place. Them pulling out the kendo sticks. Ronda Rousey beat the living crap out of Charlotte with two kendo sticks. It was beautiful to see. Oh, man. This was great, man. Them fighting up the rampway. Uh, uh, Charlotte, like, applying this, like, this little hold against Ronda between the railings where you walk up the rails, up the stairs into, like, arenas. Just, just really torquing on her, like, like pulling, like, pulling back on her neck creating on that torque and tension on her neck it was just just fantastic this is this is what i wanted to see man and of course the nice little ending segment of ronda putting the arm bar through the chair and charlotte not tapping and then all of a sudden ronda's like we're not giving up and ronda's like i was glad i was hoping he was gonna say that and just went to work and then uh charlotte ends up saying i quit i quit i quit I enjoyed every bit of this. Ronda is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. Hopefully, Bailey can come back and be the perfect heel for her to face, man. I'm, I'm hoping uh, Bailey can come back, bro, soon. Because I, I think that will be uh, a nice first opponent for Charlotte, and, uh, for uh, Ronda Rousey, is Bailey. What do you guys think? Do y'all think that would be a cool opponent for her if Bailey came back to face Ronda Rousey? For the SmackDown Women's Championship. I think it would be pretty cool. Um, I guess they went. I don't know how true this was. Some of y'all in the chat was saying she's legit. Got a broken broken arm or something like that. But they went with the storyline of Charlotte. Something is wrong with Charlotte that's broken. So uh, 
pretty much she's not going to be on television for a while. I think that was just them writing a way off for her to not be on television, which, you know what, I'm okay with if Charlotte's not on television for a while. I'm okay with it. I, I'm not really tripping. I don't think a lot of people are. And if it's a real injury, I don't think it is. Hopefully it's not, but I, I do believe it's just a storyline injury. So, yeah, she's gonna. this was her their way to write her off television, potentially. So she won't be on SmackDown for a while. All right. So, but no, honest, honestly, fun match. Very, very, very fun match. Definitely go check this match out. This is 10 times better than the match they had at WrestleMania. My goodness. All right. This was easily the lowest point of the show. I can't tell you how bored I was during this match. Mad Cat Moss versus... Happy Corbin. Boring. Boring. If y'all know Blame Truth, he's a Call of Duty YouTube content creator. If you know, you know. Boring. How he says boring? Boring. That's how boring this goddamn match was. Oh my God. I, I could I could care less about that match. I was just sitting there. I don't care about their feud. I don't care about this match. I don't really care about them wrestling-wise. Character, I just don't care. The right person won in Mac at Mods because he needed to win there. Obviously, you're trying to build him up. I just didn't care. The crowd, crickets, dead. After they just had this fun match with Ronda and Charlotte. I mean, yeah, Ronda and Charlotte Flair. The fact that I'm saying Ronda, Charlotte Flair, fun match. So let you know the gravity of the situation. The fact they had a fun match and then we backed over with this. People were just ready for the main event. I gave this match a 2 out of 10 and I'm sticking with it. The only reason why I gave it a 2 is because they made the right booking decision. I, I didn't care. I could have cared less. I, I hope this is a one and done for you to maybe Mad Cat Moss can get into something better because I just don't care. Sorry. Boring match. Lowest Low point of the pay-per-view. Lowest point of the pay-per-view. Um, and we finally get to the main event. Woo! The triple threat match. I mean triple threat. The six-man tag. I said this and I've been saying this. I knew for a fact this match was going to be fun and entertaining. I knew this was going to happen. I still probably would have preferred the, uh, the uh, unification of the tag titles. But apparently... Fox Network said, nah, y'all not doing that. So this is why it didn't happen. Apparently, Fox was like, no, y'all can kick rocks. We're not doing that, which I guess. But this match was just, it was just fun, bro. This was so great. This is, this is, this is, I will say this, they ended off the pay per view in a very fun way. The ending surprised me because I was expecting it to go another way, but. I, hey, either way, I had a great time. I think my favorite part of this match is, and this was so beautifully set up. Randy Orton was definitely the crowd favorite. Out of all the baby faces, out of everybody tonight, Randy Orton was the big crowd favorite tonight. Randy Orton doing his trip, you know, traditional Randy Orton things. The camera is looking at him as he's in the ring. And he's setting up. I'm not sure who it was at the time. I'm I'm not sure if it would. I'm it was, I'm not sure who it was. It could have been Jimmy, may have been Jay. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he was setting up one of the Usos for the RKO. And bro, when I say the way the camera was positioned, you didn't see Roman, but you saw somebody go in for a spear just for a quick second, and. Randy turned it into a RKO and literally sent Roman Reigns to the gulags. When I say that was one of the coolest spots because of how it was set up. Oh my God, that spot was so sick. It came out of nowhere. He's running in. He thinks he's about to hit the spear. Whoop! Sent him to the gulags. He sent Roman Reigns to the gulags in that precise moment. It was great. That was so fun. This whole match was enjoyable. From 
top to bottom. It started off slow, and it, and, and it, and it, it just got better. Roman Reigns doing some of the best work in his career. I love when Roman and Drew finally was able to get into the ring and go against each other. You know they're setting it up for Hell in a Cell. This this was fun, bro. This was this is exactly what I was expecting it to be. And Roman pinning uh he Roman comes in uh ends up smearing the hell out of uh Matt Riddle ends up pinning him one two three. I was expecting the baby faces to win maybe pin one of the Usos and we was gonna get that happening but no they won. Roman got the pin and he, he and they beat him. So, it really comes down to, uh, you know, what, where the, how they're going to set things up for Hell in a Cell. You know Drew is coming after Roman. You know it is going to happen. So, we got to see how that's going to play out. And it'll be interesting to see what the Usos end up doing. Who they're going to feud with. You know, like, I'm, I'm really the Usos and Rated RK, bro. I want to know who they're going to potentially feud with as well. So, but overall, that match, fun very enjoyable and a great way to end off the show um and overall as a whole this pay-per-view was short and sweet and straight to the point there was only one match that did not need to be on the show and that was the baron corbin mad cat moss if they would have took that off the show oh this this would have been even better that match did not need to happen on this pay-per-view but outside of that everything else was solid to enjoyable to great and i have to be honest i'm probably gonna give this pay-per-view i'm i'm gonna have to give it i'm leaning towards a seven and a half to eight out of ten because this this was fun this was a pay-per-view it was fun bro majority of the matches that i saw there was literally only like maybe the the madcap moss match Boring as hell. Did not care for it. And Omos and Bobby Lashley was okay at best. Serviceable at best. That's about it. Those are the only two matches I didn't care for. But the other matches, to, enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the, I mean, there was a total of six matches. And I enjoyed four out of the six. Thoroughly. Like, actually really well. So, yeah. I'm gonna give this a seven and a half to an eight out of ten. This was this was a cool pay per view. They did their thing. They they didn't. It, it was great, man. I I think they they they're on the right track, and hopefully they can continue to build pay per views that are short, simple, straight to the point. Not too many filler matches. Not too many unimportant matches that don't need to be on the pay per view card. Keep building it like that. Hopefully, Hell in a Cell is more or less like that, man. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this pay-per-view? What you rate this pay-per-view on a scale of 1 to 10? And what feuds and build-ups are you looking forward to seeing at Hell in a Cell? Um, I believe it's next month. So let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.